This video is to show you how we get from this linear combination of cosine omega naught t and sine omega naught t to combine this to just one trig function. Now we could do that to get it in terms of just sine or just cosine. We're going to do it in terms of just cosine. And how we're going to do that is we're going to draw a triangle and a right triangle. We're going to label the sides C1 and C2 and this angle delta. That means our hypotenuse, we're going to call that A, equals the square root of C1 squared plus C2 squared. Now let's write some trig functions from this triangle. Cosine of delta is going to be adjacent over hypotenuse. Sine of delta is going to be opposite over hypotenuse and tangent of delta is going to be opposite over adjacent. Now let's multiply both sides of this one by a and do the same thing here. Now I have c1 equal a cosine delta and I can substitute that for c1 here and I have c2 equal a sine delta that I can substitute right here. So what I now have is x of t equals a cosine delta cosine omega naught t plus a sine delta sine omega naught t. Now I'm going to do a couple of things in this next step. I am going to factor out the a that's in common and I'm also going to commute these two functions and these two. They're just multiplied so I can just turn them around. So I'm going to have x of t equal the a that I factored out in front and I'm turning these around so they're in the form we want. So cosine omega naught t cosine delta plus sine omega naught t sine delta. Now looking at this, this should look familiar to you if you think of the trig identities that you know. If we have cosine of the difference between two angles, we'll call them alpha and beta, so cosine alpha minus beta, recall from trig that equals cosine alpha cosine beta plus sine alpha sine beta. And that's exactly what we have this right hand side and so we can go ahead and express it as the left hand side. So we have x of t equal, we have our a out in front and we have cosine of alpha, that's omega naught t, minus beta, that is delta. And you see that's exactly what we wanted, so we're able to express this in terms of a cosine function. We like it this way because we can easily see the amplitude, that's A. We can also see the phase angle delta, and if we divide delta by omega naught, that would be how much this is shifted. Now how do we get at delta? Well, we had our tangent delta is C2 over C1, so delta is going to be inverse tangent of C2 over C1. But we want to be careful that we get this in the correct quadrant when we're doing this. Remember inverse tangent, we've got that restricted. So our best bet is to draw a little sketch so we can put the triangle in the quadrant where it should be to give us the correct angle. So let's go ahead and see an example so that we can see this. So here we have x of t equal negative cosine 3t plus sine 3t. And we want to express this in terms of just a cosine and we want to do a sketch of the graph. So the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to draw a triangle but I'm going to put it so that my x is my c1 so I'm going to go over negative 1 and then my y is my c2 so I'm going to go up 1 here and here is my triangle. That way I can see what this angle needs to be. So I can go ahead and figure out the hypotenuse and that will give me my a. That's going to be the square root of 1 plus 1. So that's going to be square root of 2. Now to figure out my angle I can do tan inverse of c2 over c1 and that's the inverse tangent of negative 1, but if I did that, that would give me something here in quadrant 4, but we can see we want to be here in quadrant 2, and we know that when is the tangent negative 1 in quadrant 2, and that's going to be at 3 pi fourths. So our delta is going to be 3 pi 
fourth. Now we can go ahead then and express x of t as square root of 2 cosine 3t minus 3 pi fourth. Now if we want to plot this then we know that our amplitude is going to be square root of 2 so that's at about 1.4 so about right here and we know that typically at 0 the cosine is at its maximum but we have a phase shift here and this is shifted by 3 pi over 4 divided by omega naught divided by 3 and so this is going to be shifted by pi force. So this is actually going to be if we had pi force right here that's when it's going to be at its maximum and then it's going to oscillate here and our period is going to be actually 2 pi thirds because it's 2 pi over our omega naught.